begin with you, uh, Professor Gonzalez, because I found that uh, some of the initiatives uh, from IIT uh, Mandi, of which you were director, for 10 years, if I'm not mistaken, were quite remarkable in terms of uh, the association with the community, in terms of uh, things that were done for uh, 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 constituencies like farmers. You don't normally hear of all this. So could we go over some of that and look at uh, how uh, these new IITs have taken the legacy of IITs as we know them forward into a new era and what can we possibly learn uh, for uh, this new generation of uh, educational institutions that will come up? Yeah, <clears throat> th 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 thank you. <clears throat> so the purpose of starting many IITs is uh, uh, India has a lot of problems and we hope that engineers will solve these problems for, for the country. In fact, if you look today, uh, India graduates about uh, 10 lakh engineers every year and they go through four, four years of, uh, of, of B.Tech in order to, uh, to get this. And, and yet we find that many of our problems have not yet been solved and yeah. there's a lot more to go. So, so let's just look a little at, at a bit of history. Uh, the uh, earliest engineering colleges were started only 200 years ago. Uh, but engineers have been solving problems of society for thousands of years. Concrete has been around for 3,500 years. And that bridge, that aqueduct you see over there was built 2,000 years ago with concrete and it's still standing today. Uh, the iron pillar in Delhi, 1,700 years old, uh, well before BTEC uh, engineering uh, degrees were started. The printing press, Gutenberg who invented the printing press was a goldsmith. He was not an engineer. He did not study science or technology and yet he revolutionized society through the printing of books. So <clears throat> as we see, uh, for a long time engineering was done by trial and error, by apprenticeship, learning from a master. And the first engineering colleges came 200 years ago. During the Second World War, uh, there was a big uh, push to in, uh, introduce science into engineering. There were developments like radar, cryptography, operations research, and so on, which helped a lot in the, in the war. And after that, in the US, universities started to have a strong science base in their engineering curriculum. When IITs were started in the 1950s, uh, the IITs adopted this. Now, uh, the, the, the thousands of engineering colleges in the country essentially took the IIT curriculum, but if you see there's a significant difference, the, the curriculum in the colleges is largely theory-based, whereas in the IITs, uh, we have a lot of practice. <clears throat> so what is the result of this? The result is that Today, all of our six lakh, 10 lakh engineers, uh, large numbers are considered unemployable by industry. And if, if a company wants to develop innovative products, there are only about maybe 30 or 50,000 graduates per year who can uh, serve that need. <clears throat> okay. so, so what is really required for a good engineer is the ability to mix uh, science, technology, computation, uh, hands-on experience, and expert judgment all together. Now, for a long time, it was believed that this could not be taught in BTEC, whereas uh, <clears throat> there have been some experiments in uh, starting with MIT, also in uh, some IITs and IIT Madras, to see whether we can actually teach all of this in, in, in the BTEC. <clears throat> in uh, IIT Madras from 1992, uh, the institute has incubated about 230 startups <clears throat> and involving students in starting companies like this. In IIT Mandi from 2012, we introduced a new BTEC curriculum where there is project-based learning throughout the four years. Starting from first year, students work in teams to take problems of society and solve them. They do rever reverse engineering, develop their own products. They uh, study the impact of technology and society. In fact, going out into villages, uh, as you mentioned, <coughs> to understand the needs of the villagers. And, <coughs> The, to give you some examples, here are some products, uh, prototypes developed by second year BTEC students with very little technical knowledge within one semester. Uh, a smart cane, uh, a, a wall climbing Spider-Man outfit developed at a cost of about uh, 20,000 rupees uh, in three months by uh, second BTEC students. <clears throat> now, 
<coughs> with, with, so, uh, with this experience of IIT Madras and uh, IIT Mandi, essentially what we've done is that. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, yeah. In fact, when I was in IIT Madras for about 20 years, uh, the, yeah, the Tenet group, yeah. uh, Bhaskar Amurthy, uh, Ashok Junjunwal, and I started that. So recently, based on our experience of mixing uh, uh, practical work, project-based learning in the BTEC curriculum, uh, 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 several of us from IIT Mandi and IIT Madras have started a program called LEAP, uh, which is Learning Engineering Through Activity. Essentially, we offer this to colleges, and this is done through the colleges involving the college teachers. So the teachers also learn how to develop products. And well, yeah, it, it's a set of courses. As you can see, it starts out in the first year where students uh, do reverse engineering of existing products and improve them. Then in second year, they build their own product uh, to solve some problem of society. In third year, they have internships with technology companies, domain-specific uh, expertise. And in fourth year, they do major technical projects. So this is being offered uh, outside the curriculum to interested students through, through the college. <coughs> So, so essentially what I've tried to do here is, in a nutshell, to say that uh, engineering is a mix of theory and practice. And the, the, the practice must include an understanding of society, the needs of society. And uh, what we have been able to show in uh, IIT Mandi and uh, also in the experience of IIT Madras is that it is possible to introduce all this in the, in the BTEC curriculum, uh, in, the, in the BTEC, and have students uh, learn, whereas uh, many students go through a very theory-based uh, engineering and they actually start getting their practical experience only after they graduate, if they get a job in a good company. Right. <coughs> so. But um, uh, how have your students been doing, sir? It's now been uh, yeah. about just over a decade, I think. Yeah. So well, have they gone into industry? Mm -hmm. have, they, may, uh, have they started uh, their own companies? What has the profile been like? Yeah. Well, the profile of the students from IIT Mandi is uh, actually fairly similar to that of uh, the, the big uh, old IITs. Yeah. Uh, the majority go into industry, uh, about 10% uh, go, go for higher studies, some going abroad, some uh, in India, and about perhaps 10% go into civil services management and so on. So the profile is fairly similar. Uh, there are a few students who started their own companies and I believe there's one um, which is a few years old, which is quite successful in solar. What is it solar. called? It's called the Solar Labs. Uh -huh. They help, uh, they've developed a special way of uh, installation, uh, support for installation of solar, the solar systems on rooftops of houses. And uh, the IIT Mandi is likely to get a fairly substantial amount of uh, revenue back from the equity oh, that wonderful. we've got. So you're, is, you're now... Uh, uh, an equity partner in that yeah, startup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think we'll soon see you on Shark Tank then, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> presenting a business idea. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, a, a Professor, if I may come to you and talk about uh, IIT Guwahati, is it pretty much the same model that uh, Professor Gonzalez is talking about, or is it different? Completely different, ma'am, because uh, you see, IITs uh, started, as he rightly said, 1950s and 60s, as engineer engineering colleges. And uh, five IITs were there for uh, almost 30 years. Yeah. After that, only IIT Guwahati came up in 94. IIT Guwahati started in the city of, I mean, north of Guwahati, on the bank of Brahmaputra, when the conditions were not right there. People you were never able really to like to even go there, because it was insurgency. Oh, yes, of course. A lot of fact, you know, there was no connectivity. But today, IIT Guwahati has shown to the, I mean, even you know, it's a model actually, model IIT, because it is completely indigenous efforts of Indian scientists and engineers to create this IIT Guwahati. Completely unique. And we have mentored newer IITs as well. IIT partner is completely mentored by IIT Guwahati. Triple IIT Bhagalpur, Triple IIT Manipur, and most of the Northeastern NITs are mentored by IIT Guwahati. So IIT Guwahati is only one institute in the entire Northeast seven sister, if you add Sikkim to it, eight states, the only one single IIT is catering to. So today we have reached the stage of 8,500 students, 450 faculty, and a 700 acres, a beautiful campus, one of the actually, 
I mean, his campus is also very nice. Mandi, in the hilly area, but I'll tell you, I'm the banks of Brahmaputra. Oh, IIT yeah, what a magnificent is, river. One of the very beautiful, very well built. So, are you, how IIT Gohati is different. Yeah. So, that's what it I It seemed like, like the same model. How is it different? Yeah, that's what I would like to tell you. See, when, when we started, we didn't have even, you know, any support from any international university. It's all the Indian professors and scientists got together. Definitely, they're all from some of the IITs only. I'm not saying that they just came from the moon. <laughs> so, but the effort is completely indigenous. And that built a confidence in the Indian uh, educational system that a, an institute can be grown and become today number two in citation per faculty, okay, where research is the major focus. Today, next to Indian Institute of Science, IIT Gohati has more citations per faculty. This is the QS World Ranking 2022, okay? And even this year, I was looking at the data, more than 2,000 plus publications have been brought up. So research and development is part and parcel of the institute, and where we give a lot of emphasis on industrial interactions. So we have created a research park, as very similar to IIT Madras, we have a one research park, where in the, during the pandemic year, we were able to attract 20 to 22 companies, and transfer, technology transfers are done, more than 25 technology transfer done, all this during the pandemic. So very young institute of 27 years only, see when compared to the older IITs, we are quite different because it's very young. And let me also tell you, when IITs were started, were basically in engineering colleges until 1990. Today, Indian Institute of Technologies are institutes of Indian technologies. There are a lot of products, technology transfers are happening, and these are all, I mean, uh, being adopted and given to the society. And we have a close link with the uh, society. Our Rural Technology Center at IIT Guwahati has done tremendous work in modifying the power looms to power looms or semi-power looms. And similarly, I can go on, actually. You know, there are a lot of new innovations through students and faculty interacting have been brought up. And the placements are at the past. You see, what we are trying to do is we are trying to encourage entrepreneurship and start more and more. So we, this year, we have started a school of business. The whole idea is not to create another MBA program. No. It is to create all our thousand plus undergraduate students of B.Tech and B.Design to provide an opportunity, opportunity for them to do a minor in business development, marketing, HR, finance, so that they will become tomorrow's entrepreneurs. And they will be a job givers than job seekers. Education policy talks about the multidisciplinarity. You were already practicing it at yes. IIT Gohati and IIT Mandi in different ways. Yeah. So is this, is this, do you think, your uh, 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 lasting contribution to society? Has it changed the perception of what engineers can do in a society, or uh, is there something else? Um, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Uh, as I was saying, the, as I said, that uh, the uh, at IIT Mandi we have uh, uh, changed the conception of what it is to uh, become an engineering graduate. Right. That you need to learn how to understand society, figure out a problem of the society, and solve it, build it, get it working, deliver it to the right. customers. So all of that, which is not being done in in, in engineering education earlier. Right. Um, <clears throat> In fact, in IIT Mandi, we have something like about 15 to 18 percent of the credits is in humanities. Yes. Which is uh, m uh, more than in many other places. No, in yeah, fact, I, I, I must say that I'm, uh, uh, I, I also dabbled in cinema. Some of the finest uh, film scholars are actually now from IITs, IITs yeah, you know, yeah. the younger IITs, the newer yeah. ones. It's quite uh, fascinating. Yeah. And they're doing some really cutting edge work. Yeah. I would also uh, just like to, uh, t uh, since today is International Women's Day, yes. I'd like to mention <laughs> something that uh, in IIT Mandi, uh, we are in a rural area. We are uh, surrounded by villages with uh, a few hundred people each. <clears throat> when we started out, we had some students study the needs of the, uh, of the village women in the area we're in. And they found that the women wanted to 
uh, get additional skills, they wanted to start businesses, they wanted mm. to improve their, their livelihood. So IIT Mandi has started uh, an NGO called eWork, Enabling Women of Command. Oh. So for the last five years, eWork has helped about over a dozen uh, n n women to start their own businesses. These are villages with a few hundred people, so about a dozen Wonderful. businesses is, is, a large, is a large number. Uh, there are uh, several of the, uh, uh, of the uh, w uh, young women and girls who have t uh, uh, taken comp uh, computer courses. They've learned spoken English, so their employability is better. Uh, some of the women, for the first time in that area, uh, got registered as PWD labor contractors. Wow. Earlier, the PWD labor contractors were all men. So, 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 so some is, remarkable transformations yeah, yeah. you've yeah, seen. Yeah, so that is actually transforming the society right. of that area of Himachal. Right. Yeah. Is, is that something that is happening in Guwahati as well? Yeah, in a completely different way. You know, uh, because I are, believe you have a drone program, you have many <laughs> such programs. Exactly. So we are actually taking a lot of technologies to the local. Right. You now we have a, a lot of reach because we see, we, I mean all of you know that Northeast is actually bounded by only 2% Boundary is common between in, in the mainland India and the uh, rest of uh, the Northeast. Northeast is 98% boundaries are with international boundary. Right. Bangladesh, Myanmar, Bhutan, you know. Yeah, actually, China. I didn't look at it that way. 98%. 98% of the boundary is international boundary. Oh, right. Okay. So, our, uh, even though our students actually, we have looked at during this pandemic, where are the, our students are coming from? We have almost 600 districts of India we have students from. They're represented. Yeah, out, of, out of 750 are odd uh, districts, 600 uh, from districts we have representation. So that's truly another, I mean, in, 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 in India there. Right. You know, we have close to about 8,500 students, right. I told you. So our institute, I mean, IIT is actually growing leaps and bounds, even though it was created in an area where there was no accessibility. So how exactly did it transform that area? You talked exactly. about the Let institutions me. you mentored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about the communities around you? Yes. Let me also talk about the first the institution. See, the, when this uh, land was allotted in 94, it was all marshy land. Okay. Next to Brahmaputra River. Right. It's only hardly about 20 meters from the Brahmaputra right. River. Mighty Brahmaputra River. Every time in our monsoon, occurs, 70% uh. of Assam is underwater. Yeah. Today, the campus is built so well, not even one road comes underwater. I am a civil engineer. I keep telling this example because our first director was a civil engineer who had built the campus next to Brahmaputra River. It's so beautiful that not even one road comes underwater, but entire 70% of the Assam is underwater every month. So. Okay? This is the Why story. can't you just <laughs> export your technology exactly. to the Correct. rest of us? No, no, we are trying to do that now. We are working with the state government very, very closely to solve some of these problems and we are also looking at studies on Brahmaputra Yuvar. We have created a Australia-India water center with, uh, in, from Indian, there are third, 15 universities jointly working on mission water. Because today, India has, you know, I mean, we talk about, you know, uh, Chennai is running out of water, Bangalore is running out of water. You have too much of it. Exactly. We That's have, the problem with see, this country. India has a lot of water, but what we are short of is storage. Yeah. So we need to create a newer story structures. I think we have forgotten some of our old ancestral practices. Mm. So we might have to revive some of them back again. Right. So some of those work is happening in the Northeast, closely, right. very closely with the local uh, initiative, whether okay. it's Nagaland or uh, Assam or uh, 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 this uh, Meghalai. No. So do the IITs talk to each other? Do you talk yeah. to him? Does he talk to you? <laughs> or do you question. just talk to the yeah. established IITs? No. Uh, well, there is actually a lot of uh, communication between IITs and it happens in different ways. For instance, uh, when we have, say, a, uh, a PhD uh, yeah. viva, the experts come from other IITs. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, back and forth uh, informal. Uh, th there are also uh, formal occasions like all the deans of academics right. and of all IITs meet together, all the directors meet and so on. So there are both formal, but I think the informal is more important. For instance, when some faculty from IIT Bombay came 
from the electrical engineering department, they visited IIT Mandi and they saw our reverse engineering right. program. They went back and started something similar okay. in, in IIT Bombay. So for, that, for isn't that supposed so. to be the Bell Lab model where the informal exchanges yeah, that yeah, happen yeah, in right. yeah. canteens mm -hmm. and corridors is actually much more useful <laughs> yeah, than what right. happens yeah. in classrooms? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, is, is a lot of that happening or is there still a caste system that you have the top five and then the rest are sort of... <laughs> No, um, no, I, I, I don't. I mean, not uh, quite. I agree with you completely. Yeah. It's always there is a lot of interactions happening, right. informal, formal. Okay, very, I'll give you one or two examples yeah. very quickly. You see, for the national examination, I think all of them know JEE or yeah. they, it's done by. They IIT know. They all, I'm sure they all take it and poor things. I don't know how <laughs> they clear it. Yeah, yeah, we, it's we impossible. Know it's a, you know, collaborative efforts. You see, huh. each IIT will take the lead. And we conducted, you know, uh, one of the lead institutes this year. Next year will become another IIT. Okay. So there is a very formal way of doing it. The another way is, you know, we have. I have also started recently. IIT Council has accepted joint degree between IITs. IIT Guwahati has now joint PhD degree with IIT BHU. Right. This is the very first one unique. So we never. We had actually joint degrees with U.S. universities or Japanese universities or I mean European universities, but we never thought about here. So when we presented this to IIT Council, they immediately accepted it and we have implemented it. We have a joint PhD students between IIT Bona, BHU and IIT Guwahati. So like that, there is a formal and informal uh, collaboration between IIT, as you rightly said. You know, our faculties also move. Mm. See, when new IITs are created, you know, IIT Tirupati or IIT Mandi, a lot of faculties from older mm. IITs have moved for their conveniences. So there is a lot of synergy between these uh, institutions. Uh, there's no caste system, no hierarchy? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. <coughs> yeah, there's, there's no hierarchy and I'd just like to point See, out that, well, as he said, we are very friendly, we learn from each other. There's also little, a little, competition. A little fr friendly competition. <laughs> he talked about his beautiful campus. This is IIT Mandi's beautiful oh campus. And, and, and you should have got your pictures, <laughs> see? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I he, he knew we... Four minutes, so I, I didn't... Uh, yeah, make yeah, yeah anyway, we look no, it even, up. Even if he brought his picture, it wouldn't be... Uh, <laughs> I'm disappear. glad that there's this competition. But uh, really, at the end of it, what do we need? We need engineers who are able to solve our problems, as he says. We need... Uh, people who are able to create jobs for other youngsters. That's what we need, don't we? As simple as that. No, madam. I no? think it's something more than that. What do we need? See, I'll tell you, we are going to be the global engineers for the whole world. I, I don't think we should restrict to only to India. See, we, we, uh, we are producing almost close to about uh, 4.5 million engineers. Okay? Uh, if you look at the statistics... Every year? 27 million students enrolled in undergraduate studies, about four and a half million are engineers across. So we are going but to But there's be always the that question, sir, of employability and soft skills and how equipped are they for the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, for jobs. There's that question, right? Definitely there is a question. That is why, you know, see, these 10,000 students, what we take at IIT may not sufficiently, I mean, there may not be enough. So IITs are also now going, for example, IIT Madras program on online. Program. Yeah. So we're also going online so that we can reach out to large numbers. So even IIT Guwahati is planning to go for online programs where, you know, laboratory component is not much. So initially we would like to start. Maybe we could do much more with, through collaborative efforts because there are now 23 IITs. So we can ask the students to go attend their laboratory classes nearby where they, are, their where they belong to. And then come to no, this online, this uh, no, COVID sir, pandemic. My, my question was a little different in terms of the employability because there's a lot of uh, questioning yeah. of that, isn't there? Yeah. So, uh, as, as a, uh, see, the uh, IIT students get a lot of uh, practical exposure as mm -hmm. well as good theory, so employability is not an issue for them. Now, when you look at employability for the other, uh, other ten, colleges, the other yeah. 9.9 lakh students. Uh, uh, that's where programs like this leap, where we work yeah. with the college faculty, we train the college faculty, and then there's a multiplier effect. Hmm. Uh, another similar program that uh, we are involved in is called CS Edu. What we're doing here is that we are taking college teachers of, uh, who teach computer science and IIT faculty teach them how to teach more effectively, okay. the, the, the basic subjects. So right now we're running, we have about 200 college faculty this program is going on right now, uh, <clears throat> who are going through this uh, program, and they will become better teachers of right. their subjects in future. 
so so the, these ways these are ways by which we are improving the education of the other engineering colleges to, but it's to, still yeah. very tough to get in yeah, right yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but that's a challenge but yeah. still you know it's possible to do that because of this you know online part has come in so we can actually disseminate good quality uh, through you know, to a large number yeah. right and uh, and also you know there are some training programs after their graduation we can in include and also through this national education policy multidisciplinary culture is coming and i think in another maybe 5 to 6 years we will be the world leaders even during the quality uh, here's to that i hope it happens any uh, a, a parting wish for the for what what are the what are the qualify what are the qualities that a good engineer needs to have three good qualities that an that uh, an engineer needs to have so <clears throat> it's <clears throat> see the the the, the uh, uh, one essential quality is a solid uh, uh, solid knowledge of uh, science and technology right. the basics the fundamentals secondly an understanding of society being able to figure out the needs of society to talk to different kinds of people thirdly the ability to work in teams yeah. because uh, uh, any product nice. is multidisciplinary yeah. and no one is an expert in everything see yeah. these are the three and now of these three only the first one is taught in most colleges yeah. uh, but all three are needed and that's what we are working on wonderful uh, you professor I, I, i say attitude of a student you know he, he should be ready to she. do he or she both she. yes on international women's day yes yeah yeah no thank you on all days <laughs> <laughs> so an attitude should be the one you know which takes them to higher heights right so they should have a right attitude and uh, do you find it in all your students or do you have to inculcate it a bit we, we have to inculcate yeah. it definitely we have to inculcate a bit because some of them as i told you they come from very the, very deprived uh, backgrounds also i'm as sure well, they see lot of uh, you know students come from very remote areas small villages yeah. you know so they need to be also not only taught in english education and then you know some uh, attitudes yeah. towards you know what an engineer should be doing ethics and all that is very also important very critical actually right For wonderful you. thank you uh, gentlemen you are creating the future of this country and uh, thank you for that thank you thank you Th thank you thank you very much